My dear respective brothers and elders and sisters who are going to be listening With all that which is happening around the world With all the difficulties, the trials and tribulations That we are going through as a Muslim Ummah And also that which we as individuals are experiencing When the trials and the tribulations become so much and too hot to handle We begin to feel as if there is no light at the end of the tunnel And it causes us to lose hope in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَلِذَلِكَ الْمُتَأَمِّلِ The one who really just ponders upon the textual evidences of the Qur'an and the Sunnah and what the scholars have enlightened us with related to trials and tribulations what it ends up doing is easing the pain that many of us might be suffering from something very very profound that Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala mentioned with regards to ibtilaat he says al-masa'ibu ni'mah the trials and the tribulations is a ni'mah is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala why? and then he lists a whole load of things he says لِأَنَّهَا مُكَفِّرَاتٌ لِلذُّنُوبِ because it expiates one's sins وَيَدْعُوا إِلَى الصَّبْرِ and he invites an individual now to become patient وَيُثَابُ عَلَيْهَا and he's rewarded for all of that in which he is patient in and then look what he says وَتَقْتَضِ الْإِنَابَةَ وَالذُلَّ إِلَى اللَّهِ it also causes an individual to run back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be humble in front of his Lord وَلِعْرَاضَ عَنِ الْخَلْقِ and it causes an individual to turn away from the creation Sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts us in some of these situations where nobody is able to do anything for us. So one will be left without no choice except to break down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he says, وَغَيْرَ ذَلِكَ مِنَ الْمَصَالِحِ الْعَظِيمَةِ And the rest of the many benefits that it comes with. If we just think about this point for a moment It leads an individual to turn away from the creation The way the creation is The more you ask them The more they tend to Feel bad towards you And they begin to despise and dislike you This guy is always asking for things As opposed to Allah Azza wa Jal مَنْ لَمْ يَسْأَلِ اللَّهِ يَغْضَبْ عَلَيْهِ As the Prophet Sallallahu said Whoever doesn't ask Allah, Allah becomes angry with him Not so long ago Something that I saw on Twitter and I think is worth mentioning The American President Came out And said The only thing that we can do now When the COVID-19 intensified the only thing that we can do now is is turn to God. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala he said this hundreds of years ago. He never said this when the COVID-19 started. And this is exactly the kind of effect that he has on us human beings. He was left on his knees. Couldn't do anything. And we all know the state of how he speaks and the way he acts. Nothing less than arrogance. Wallahi reminded me of the statement of Allah when he said فَإِذَا رَكِبُوا فِي الْفُلْكِ دَعَوُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينِ فَلَمَّا نَجَّاهُمْ إِلَى الْبَرِّ إِذَا هُمْ يُشْرِكُونَ When they get on the ship and they begin to fear for their lives Allah says they begin to call on to Allah Azza wa Jal with sincerity but when they get safe and they get home they begin to do shirk again 
Also Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions another powerful statement. He says, لَوْلَا مِحَنُ الدُّنْيَا وَمَصَائِبُهَا لَأَصَابَ الْعَبْدَ مِنْ أَدْوَاءِ الْكِبْرِ وَالْعُجْبِ وَالْفَرْعَنَةِ وَقَسْوَةِ الْقَلْبِ If it wasn't for the trials and tribulations, the abd, he would be afflicted with many diseases. And from the diseases that he mentioned was arrogance, self-amazement, Fir'auni type characteristics, وَقَسْوَةِ الْقَلْبِ And also the hardness of the heart. مَا هُوَ سَبَبُ هَلَاكِ عَاجِلًا وَآجِلًا And he will end up destroying himself in this dunya before he gets to the hereafter. And then look what he says, وَمِنْ رَحْمَةِ أَرْحَمِ الرَّاحِمِينَ and from the mercy of the one who is the most merciful, Allah Azza wa Jal. أَنْ يَتَفَقَّدَهُ بِالْأَحْيَانِ That sometimes Allah Azza wa Jal trials and tribulates the servant so he protects himself from some of these diseases, these illnesses that are far worse than the COVID-19 that is currently on the rise again. And the benefits, my beloved brothers and sisters, is many with regards to the trials and tribulations and as to why an individual might go through some of these difficulties. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Qur'an, He tells us a lot about how the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam suffered. And when we look at the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it serves as an inspiration for us all. If the best of the creation went through all of these difficulties, then who am I to complain? And even with the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there would be times where he needed inspiration. So Allah would tell him about Musa and the rest of the Prophets who were harmed and went through difficulties. Let's now stand over the seer of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and all that which he went through. One thing that he tasted and experienced a lot before he even entered into this world was losing some of his relatives. He lost his father while he was still in the womb of his mother. And then he loses his mother at the age of six. And then his grandfather who took responsibility after his mother passed away. He loses him at the age of eight. And then his uncle became responsible of him, took care of him. Later on we know that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he married Khadija, right? Six out of the seven children that he had was from Khadija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And he lost his beloved wife as well. And those he left or lost, in fact, it didn't stop there. We are told in these lines of poetry, وَوِلْدُهُ مِنْهَا خَلَى إِبْرَاهِيمِ فالأول القاسم حاز التكريم وزينب نقية وفاطمة وأم كلثوم لهن خاطمة والطاهر الطيب عبد الله وقيل كل اسم لفرد زاهي أنا نقول the poet says فالكل في حياته ذاق الحمام وبعده فاطمة بنصف عام All of them tasted death in the lifetime of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم except فاطمة Radiallahu ta'ala anha. She passed away six months after the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had departed his world. Six out of the seven kids that he had, they left this world in his lifetime. He buried them with his own hands. How many of us have even come close to anything like this? Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He narrates the hadith and he says, شَهِدْتُ بِنْتًا لِلنَّبِيَّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمَ تُدْفَنُ 
ورسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم جالس عند القبر فرأيت عينيه تدمعان I saw the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم burying one of his daughters while he was sitting near the grave shedding tears let us for a moment imagine our prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم sitting beside the grave and crying his eyes out Ibrahim Ibrahim, his other son إِنَّ الْعَيْنَ لَتَدْمَعْ وَإِنَّ الْقَلْبَ لَيَحْزَنْ وَإِنَّ بِفِرَاقِكَ يَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ لَمَحْزُونُونَ Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم was quoted of having said The eyes shed tears The heart is filled with sorrow Indeed, we are sad With you having left us, O Ibrahim His ibtilaat didn't stop there the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was humiliated. He was harmed. He was bullied. Not by just anybody. By the closest of his relatives. And you know as they say, when harm comes from someone who's closer to you, it tends to be much, much more painful than when it comes from those who you don't give two hoots about. They just called him just about every insult under the sun. Allah says in the Quran, وَقَالُوا يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِي نُزِّلَ عَلَيْهِ الذِّكْرِ إِنَّكَ لَمَجْنُونَ They said to him, O oh, the one who claims that the revelation came down upon him, indeed you are someone who is crazy, you are a madman. وَيَقُولُونَ أَإِنَّا لَتَارِكُ آلِهَتِنَا لِشَاعِرٍ مَجْنُونَ Allah quotes them saying, you want us to leave our gods for a sha'ir, a poet who's lost the plot, who's gone crazy. وَعَجِبُوا أَنْ جَاءَهُمْ مُنْذِرٌ مِنْهُمْ وَقَالَ الْكَافِرُونَ إِنَّ هَذَا لَسَاحِرٌ كَذَّابٌ They became amazed that there was from amongst them a wuna. And they called him what? A magician who's an excessive liar. This is some of the insults that he had to deal with. Let us imagine, my brothers and my sisters, one of our relatives humiliating us in front of everybody, how we would feel. That's exactly what his uncle Abu Lahab did to him. The Messenger وسلم, one time called all of the individuals who were there at the market at the time in order to give them a reminder. And he said to them, if I was to tell you that there is an army coming, would you believe me? They said yes. Because he wasn't known to be a liar. And then he told them, that I have come to give you glad tidings, and I have come to warn you, from a painful punishment. His uncle turns around to him and he says, Ali هَذَا جَمَعْتَنَا تَبَّنْ لك. You gathered us for this, May you perish in front of everyone and everyone dispersed. That's really hard to take for you to be insulted by your own relatives when giving them da'wah. And it's not just when you are alone with them but in front of the people. That can be very hard to take. Especially when your revert or your family is far away from the religion very liberal like but then look what Allah Azza wa Jal says to his prophet وَلَقَدَ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّكَ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ we can see and we know that it is causing you a lot of tightness in your chest in your heart due to what they are saying فَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ وَكُنْ مِنَ السَّاجِدِينَ وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ so he would be inspired by the likes of Nuh والسلام, who was mocked for making a ship. They would go by and they would mock him. And he would respond back to them and say, 
إن تسخروا منا فإنا نسخر منكم كما تسخرون فسوف تعلمون If you mock us today, there will be a day when we will laugh at you and you will know and see. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is being encouraged, is being inspired through these stories that he is being told about. فَقْصُصِ الْقَصَصَ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَكَّرُونَ So that they may think. Tell them about these stories, Allah says. One time the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is prostrating in front of the Kaaba, they start daring one another. Who's going to get the intestines of the sheep that was slaughtered? They come and they throw it on his back. Fatima radiallahu ta'ala anha, she comes and she starts taking her off the, the back of her father. Aqulu ma tasma'oon wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin astaghfiruh innahu al-ghafur rahim. الحمد لله وكفى والصلاة والسلام على النبي المصطفى المجتبى My brothers and my sisters The trials and the tribulations of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam It didn't stop in Mecca They tried to assassinate him When he got to al Medina, And the stories are known of How the Jews They tried to throw a big rock On top of his head In order to take him out one time Also, we know from the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he wasn't the richest of people. There would be times when he would walk into his home as Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha mentioned. دَخَلَ عَلَيْنَا النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ ذَاتَ يَوْمٍ فَقَالْ هَلْ عِنْدَكُمْ شَيْءٍ He asked, is there anything that I can eat today? قُلْنَا لَا they would say, there is nothing here today. Inni idan sa'im. If that is the case, I'm going to fast. Have we ever walked into our kitchens, opened the fridge, and the fridge was empty? One time the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said to Abu Bakr and Umar, when they were looking for food, and he asked them, what caused you to leave your home? They said it was jur, hunger. Ma akhrajani illa ma akhrajukuma. He said to them, that which caused me to leave my house was none other than the reason why you left. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam passes away. Mata Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wa lam yatruk shay'an He never left anything behind. La dirhaman wa la dinaran wa la amatan wa la abdan illa baghlatahu al-bayda wa silahan lah wa ardhan ja'alaha sadaqah he didn't leave any money behind, no dirham, no dinar, the dollars and the pounds that we have today. He never left a slave girl or a slave boy. He just had a white mule, a sword and a piece of land that he gave a sadaqah. This was the state of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So to conclude, my brothers and my sisters, when we go through some of these difficulties, some of these trials, how do we as Muslims deal with it? Sometimes it becomes so hard to bear. We are told in the Quran, Allah says, وَاسْتَعِينُوا بِالصَّبْرِ وَالصَّلَاةِ Seek aid and assistance in the salah. Through being able to making yourselves patient. Sometimes so difficult, you can't handle it, go and pray. And see how you feel after that. We are told about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Can Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, إِذَا حَزَبَهُ أَمْرْ فَزَعِ الصَّلَاةِ When Nabi was stricken with difficulty, he would rush to the salah. Just the other day, I was being told by a non-Muslim, I don't know how to deal with some of these trials, the stress of work. Wallahi made me appreciate Al-Islam and the guidance of the Prophet Sallallahu Because this Salah was like a getaway for many of the righteous of the past. 
You know how today the kuffar, they have getaways. They want to just get away from everything, right? So they go on a little boy's trip to the Bahamas maybe. To forget about all the stresses and the difficulties that they're going through. To the Salaf, the righteous generations of the past. Their getaway was the Salah. To forget all of these difficulties and these hardships that they may have been going through. ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا اصرف عنا عذاب جهنم إن عذابها كان غراما إنها ساءت مستقرا ومقاما سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك شدوا لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك وأخم الصلاة